Cable mod, power cord, power supply, direct replacement kits are now available for Cooler Master V-Series power supplies. Hey guys, it's TTL back with another rush kit video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Asus X99MWS. The WS stands for workstation. Uh, and this is a big deal because a lot of people have been asking for an uh, Asus X99 motherboard. Uh, specifically, they've been asking for the uh, Republic of Gamers Gene. But Asus are saying they don't want to make an MATX X99 board in the ROG branding. But they have released this one for us in the workstation-esque kind of feel. Which obviously means that it's uh, slightly different under the skin and it's less gamery uh, fight. But really, I should stop talking and just get the box open for you all, shouldn't I? So we have the board out here, but in the box you do get the usual accessories like the uh, SATA cables and... There is uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth around the back, so you do get the aerial for that. Uh, but other than what I would call the usual suspects, you don't get anything that uh, stands out particularly to be wasting your time with when we could be doing something like looking at this sexy board. Now, uh, where it's not gamer-esque and it's more workstation, you've got what I would call uh, an old-school style uh, heatsink array on here. And you can see that the... Uh, MOSFET heatsink at the top is actually relatively small, but it does pan round to this larger one on the other side, which doesn't appear to be doing anything other than covering some caps up um, and uh, giving a little bit more surface area to the cooling. You can see it's not really touching anything there at all, it's just on some standoffs. So that's the reason why that's there, but you can see that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the Asus Gucci gold topped chokes going on there. So we've got eight power phases. Obviously with the um, the fact that it's MATX means there's a lot less room on the board. So we've only got two DIMMs either side of DDR4 memory. They do say it's uh, up to 3200 megahertz with uh, overclock supported. But then again, the Rampage says that and I've had that running at significantly more than 3200. But when we do do the full review, we will um, uh, look into that a little bit more. When we look down the bottom, in fact, no, let's just stay at the top. Two 8-pin powers up there. We've got a power and a reset button down the side, which is a, 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 a nice feature for these. We've got the memo K button, and then we've also got a, a TPU button with a TPU LED above it. We've got a, a USB 3 header here for the front. There is only a single one on this board, but obviously that does mean that you get two at the front of the board. If we have a look here, we can see that we've got an EPU and the Easy XMP switch. So if you've got your memory, you can just flick the Easy XMP and it'll make your memory run at rated, as long as your CPU is capable of it. Obviously, if you're trying to get 3600 megahertz memory running and your CPU is just not capable of it, that might not help you. But for the lower end stuff, the easier stuff, you should be fine. We've got eight SATA 6 around the back here. Well, there's quite a few fan headers scattered around as well that I've just been noticing. I mean, we've got one there. Oh, no, that's a, a VRM test. It's it was a lovely shadow that threw me at the top there. If we have a look, you can see. But with the shadow, it made it look like a fan header. We've got a fan header there. Fan header there. We've got two down here by the memory and another one over here around the back. I was just looking to see if we had any along the bottom and it doesn't appear that we do, but we do have a Q code or a PCI code or a postcode, however you like, would like to call it. There's another button down here and it's a clear CMOS button. I was just looking for the writing. So you can see it, we've got two internal um, USB 2s, which is quite handy considering the amount of Corsair stuff that's coming out that needs these at the moment. Two's almost the minimum before you need to start breaking out the hubs. Uh, and it does come with crystal sound too, as you can see there. There's a six pin header here for if you've got lots of graphics cards in. Although I have to admit, I found very little times where I've actually needed to get this connected in usual running scenarios. So don't go thinking that if you put two graphics cards in this, you have to run that. If we come round the back of the board, we've got some USB 3.1, we've got four USB normal, uh, normal USB 3, two USB 2s and a PS2 port, which is kind of nice. BIOS flashback button at the back here, two Intel uh, gigabit Ethernets, 
This is Bluetooth and uh, wireless on the back, and as I said, there is an aerial inside the box, which is uh, kind of handy. I have to admit, though, this is normally the type of thing that I end up removing because I'm, I'm not a fan of wireless. But that's a personal thing. People ask me why. I always run home plugs. Anyway, and we do have the um, uh, audio at the back here, which, as I said, is crystal sound, and this will light up, and it has a uh, separate uh, PCB kind of trail. And you can see the audio-specific caps at the bottom to get the best from your signal. But there we have it. It is kind of understated. Uh, it's more black and grey. It seems to be something that Asus is heading to at the moment. It does look like the big full, uh, full sized ATX uh, workstation board. And I have to admit, I do kind of like it. We will be reviewing this uh, in the not too distant future on the main OC3D website and the main OC3D TV YouTube channel. But for now, at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with our rush kit look at the Asus X99M workstation. Cable mod, power cord, power supply, direct replacement kits are now available for Cooler Master V-Series power supplies.